Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtz Kazat's videos. Specifically, atoms as big as mountains, neutron stars explained. Oh boy. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this one out. Neutron stars are one of the most extreme things in the universe. Sure. They're like giant atom cores, kilometers in <laughs> diameter, unbelievably dense and violent. But I've heard the density comparison of neutron stars compared to 10,000 melted down aircraft carriers. It's pretty crazy. How can something like this even exist? Super dense stars. The life of a star is dominated by two forces being in balance, its own gravity and the radiation pressure of its fusion reaction. In the core of stars, hydrogen is fused into helium. Radiation pressure, I've never heard it referred to as that, but yeah, two opposite forces, one drawing it in, the other pushing it out. Fusion is very powerful, very powerful nuclear reaction. Though, to get there, you essentially just need three things, high temperature, high pressure, and confinement time. And you get said extreme temperature and pressure from the gravity. And as far as the confinement time goes, well, it's a, it's a really big fusion reactor that's been around for billions of years. Even the bigger ones that don't last as long are on the order of millions of years. That's why you can achieve fusion in a star at the relatively low temperature of tens of millions of degrees Celsius compared to having to get into the hundreds of millions and some even into the single digit billions on Earth. But those are just experiments for now. Eventually, the hydrogen in the core is exhausted. If the star is massive enough, helium is now fused into carbon. The cores of these massive stars become layered like onions as heavier and heavier atomic nuclei build up at the center. And again, that level of fusion, you're only going to see in a star. You're going to see the hydrogen into helium is what you're mostly going to see on Earth. You'll see some things with lithium as well, but also small. But things like carbon, oxygen, no, way too heavy. You just don't have nearly enough energy in your system, enough heat, enough pressure to do something like that on Earth. It's also not efficient. You start to fuse these super heavy things that it takes more energy than you would ever get off of that. Hydrogen to helium does give off energy, more energy in a star. Carbon is fused into neon, which leads to oxygen, which leads to silicon. Eventually, the fusion reaction hits iron, which cannot fuse into another element. Yeah, even when like the that. fusion stops, the radiation pressure drops rapidly. The star is no longer in balance, and if its core mass exceeds about 1.4 solar masses, a catastrophic collapse takes place. Its mass towards the center, the gravity is the gravity is just going to go up and drive it for even fa even faster because of the iron. It's a it's an exponential increase. Throughout the billions of years of a star, you're mainly going to see that hydrogen helium reaction. You're not even going to see that other stuff until towards the end of the sun's life cycle. The outer part of the core reaches velocities of up to 70,000 kilometers a second as it collapses towards the center of the star. <laughs> the atoms do not look like this. Yeah, and that's why it's an exponentially increasing in the resultant force of gravity going up and the fusion pressure, to use their term, I think that's what they called it, going down. Now, only the fundamental forces inside an atom are left to fight the gravitational collapse. The quantum mechanical repulsion of electrons is overcome and electrons and protons fuse into neutrons packed as densely as an atomic nucleus. The outer layers of the star are so yeah, neutrons are bigger than protons. That's one thing, that's one misconception out there. They're, they're about the same size, but no. A free neutron will actually decay into a proton and an electron after about 15 minutes. Though granted, a free neutron usually isn't even going to last that long. It's going to get absorbed by something before that happens. And in this case, they're so tightly packed, well, it's not a free neutron anymore. It's very unfree. ...are catapulted into space in a violent supernova explosion. So, now we have a neutron star. Its mass yep. is between one and three suns, but compressed to an object about 25 kilometers wide. <laughs> and 500,000 times the mass of Earth in this tiny ball that's roughly the diameter of Manhattan. <laughs> it's so dense that one cubic centimeter of neutron star contains the same mass as an iron cube 700 meters across. 
That's roughly one analogy. billion tons, <laughs> as massive as Mount Everest, in a space the size of a sugar cube. Neutron star gravity is pretty impressive too. If you were to, not sure that gets us to the atoms as big as mountains, though. But maybe they'll get to it in a bit. Drop an object from one meter over the surface, it would hit the star in one microsecond and accelerate <laughs> up to 7.2 million kilometers per hour. I wonder what terminal velocity on that thing's like. I guess it's kind of irrelevant, but <laughs> crazy. The surface is super flat, with irregularities of five millimeters maximum, with a super thin atmosphere of hot plasma. The surface temperature atmosphere. is about one million Kelvin compared to five thousand. Based on calculations, I was going to say, would you even call that an atmosphere? As far as pressure, it'd be way higher than an atmosphere in terms of pressure. But I can understand the uh, thickness, the variations being on five millimeters. It's so densely packed. I mean, that effectively levels things out pretty good. And eight hundred Kelvin for our sun. Let's look inside the neutron star. The Ooh. crust is extremely hard and is most likely made of an like iron Pac atom <laughs> nuclei lattice with a sea of electrons flowing through them. The closer wow. we get to the core, the more neutrons and fewer protons we see until there's just an incredibly dense soup of indistinguishable neutrons. The cores of neutron stars are very, very weird. Yeah. We're not sure what their properties <laughs> are, but our closest guess is superfluid neutron degenerate matter or some kind of ultra dense quark matter. Yeah, high density. They already mentioned the electron capture, proton capturing an electron turning into a neutron. They can also spin like crazy. I know they don't measure their rotation in terms of speed, like in kilometers per hour or something like that. They measure it in hertz as in like 700 hertz that thing's spinning 700 times per second that's how fast they are old quark gluon plasma that doesn't make any sense in the traditional way <laughs> and can only exist in such an ultra extreme environment it sounds like techno babble thrown together in an episode of star trek at least they at least they're admitting it's weird for a curse gazette in many ways a neutron star is similar to a giant atom core the most important difference is that atom cores are held together by strong interaction and neutron stars by gravity. gravity. As sure. if all this wasn't extreme enough, let's take a look at a few other properties. Neutron stars spin very, oh, very go. fast. Young ones several times per second. And if there's a poor star nearby to feed the neutron <sighs> star, it. it can rotate up to several hundred times per second. Like the object PSR J1748-2446 AD, That's a mouthful. it spins at approximately 252 million oh, kilometers per hour. Used it. This is so fast that the star has a rather strange shape. We call these objects pulsars because they emit a strong radio signal. And the magnetic field... Yep. <laughs> that makes sense. Something, that fa something going that fast, it's going to have a weird deformed shape. The field of a neutron star is roughly a trillion times stronger than the forces. magnetic field of Earth. So strong that atoms get bent when they enter its influence. Okay, I think we got the point across. Neutron stars are some of the most extreme, but also some of the coolest objects in the universe. Hopefully, we'll one day send spaceships to learn more about them and take some neat pictures. Yeah, don't get the thing too close or you'll experience the crazy tidal forces, gravitational forces, and possibly spaghettification that you would have when you approach a black hole. Though with less of the timey wiminess distortions. <laughs> I guess the atoms as big as mountains, they're just talking about ultra high density into a very small area. Okay. If you want to hear more about neutron stars, I'll uh, pin it in a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.